Hi, this is Lise and I'm Belle. And you guys know us, we're here from the Flavor Company. And we are very, very excited to be starting a new series where we're going to be interviewing people from all walks of lives, uh, business owners, individuals, about quite a few different topics, but specifically about keeping curious. If you haven't noticed already, everything that we do at Flavor Company really uh, is, uh, rotates around, revolves around is the word I'm looking for, um, cultivating joy, keeping curious, and reminding you that you're absolutely worth it. So in that vein, today we have with us Dr. Todd Martin, and he's going to be talking to us about his new book, as well as one of his passion projects, something that he teaches that many people don't even think about. Uh, so before I introduce you, Dr. Martin, tell us a little bit about, I know you can go into depth into your subject here, uh, but tell us a little bit about how this particular subject of walking, which just sounds like, yeah, we all walk, okay, great, something we do every day, how that connects to keeping curious and cultivating joy and reminding people that they are worth it. Great question, Elise, uh, and thanks for having me. So, you know, I think curiosity is uh, one of the best things in life. And I think the most curious people are gonna be the happiest people. Uh, curiosity keeps your mind active. And I think how curiosity relates to my walking book and my passion for walking is that, you know, curiosity is keeping your mind open, keeping your mind thinking, and, you know, being you know, what we call mindfulness these days. And you know, walking is one of those things that we do so reflexively that we often don't even think about it. And uh, like I would say maybe the opposite of curiosity would be some complacency where you're not even thinking about something. And that would be how most people treat walking. You don't even give it a second thought. And you know, I had problems with my walking technique many years ago and I wasn't even aware about it and I never even thought about it until it was brought to my attention and then as a physician I then started to notice patients who came in with pain often had problems with the way they walked and you, you know you get somebody up on the exam room table they're complaining of foot pain and you look at their feet and they're perfectly fine their knees are fine their backs fine there's nothing wrong with them they didn't injure themselves and you're trying to figure out, well, so how come you're having pain? And then after I figured out that I was having walking issues and was able to fix those, I started to get my patients up off the exam room table, take them out in the hallway and start walking in them. And usually the problem was obvious. So you'd have somebody complaining of pain on their arches and then you get them in the hallway and their feet are faced out like 90 degrees like this when they're walking down the hall. And I'm, thinking, oh, did you knew, know your feet were turned out like that? And they're like, what? I didn't even realize that my feet were pointing at opposite walls when I was walking down the street. So I think just thinking about things and being interested or curious about them uh, helps you to kind of keep yourself healthy because you can kind of like check yourself and see like, hey, so why are my feet doing this and nobody else's feet are doing that? Okay, okay. Think it's, so yeah. step, step me back here for a minute. So because I don't think most of us, maybe I'm wrong here, but like you said, I don't think we think about how we walk. We just we just walk because we yeah. learn to walk at somewhere between like one and two and we've been walking ever since and we just assume, well, I'm walking. And yeah, I walk a little differently than somebody else, but fine, I'm, I'm walking. So when this happens to you at, at the clinic, for example, and, and you tell somebody, okay, I'm gonna go have you walk in the hallway. First of all, do they look at you like, uh, why? And then secondly, when you explain something like, oh, well, did you know that you're walking with duck feet out like this or something? After they say, oh, no, I didn't. Do, do people tend to become curious as to like, really? Like this is, this is what's causing my pain or are, are they in disbelief? I, I think it's a variety of different answers. Some people, and I was surprised at this, some people actually knew they had a problem with their walking. 
And okay. they said, oh, yes, I knew I have a weird walk. I've always had this weird walk. My whole family tells me I walk weird. And you're the only doctor who told me, yep. <laughs> I was totally aware that I am a weird walker. So I would see that. And then I had a other group of people who had no idea that they were walking this way. But I think in most cases, once you point it out to them, it's very logical because the nature of the pain they're having really parallels with what they're doing with their walking. So it's usually kind of obvious. Somebody who has pain on the outsides of their feet, you take them in the hallway and they're walking side to side like this, rolling from outside of the foot to outside of the foot. And then somebody with pain on the inside of the feet is walking with their feet like this, so the feet are collapsing inward. When you point that out to them, they're like, oh, that's interesting. And they say they realize that that's probably the problem. Most people think that they just, I've always walked that way. I've walked this way forever right. is what they'll use. Yeah, so say. that's just the way I walk, right? Yeah. Uh, right. My thought is you probably weren't doing that when you were a kid. And almost all of the people who have their feet turned out like that are wearing flip-flops to the doctor's office. Oh. And so that's when I got really curious about watching people in flip-flops. And if you go outside and watch people in flip-flops who are walking down the street, which kind of means they wear flip-flops all the time, they are all walking that way. And so there's something in the flip-flops that's making them start turning their feet out when they walk. And most people are completely oblivious to that. And so I, I think that is one of the reasons people need to be curious about you know, the way they move and, uh, and other things so they can maybe figure some of these things out before it starts becoming a problem. Because most people, like I said, when they, by the time they get to me, they've not realized what was causing them to get chronic problems with their feet or their knees or whatever it is. And okay, and so what about the, you know, like, like you said, people will often think, well, I've always walked this way. And you say, well, you know, you probably just don't remember how you walked when you were one and two and three. Um, but how about then, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of myself and thinking, well, then do people have an argument of, well, this is just the way my body's built. I don't think there's any, we can't change this. Like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna have this pain for the rest of my life. Is that ever a factor? Uh, of course, it's not just that is a factor. Walking is something that's just ingrained in people. So, you know, people assume that they've always walked that way. That's just the way their body was made to walk. And there's not really a way to fix it. And nor would they, most people probably want to go through the time of trying to fix it because it's like learning a dance, learning to walk in a different way. You really have to work at it. Uh, I realized from my own personal experience that, that it can be done. And then that's why I kind of created this whole walking code uh, course so I could try to teach people because when I first started finding patients who were walking in an abnormal way that was causing problems, I didn't have anywhere to send them. There were no walking technique books, no walking technique videos. Physical therapists didn't teach people how to walk. They would just examine people on the table and say, oh, your, your glutes must be weak, so let's give you some you know, glute strengthening exercises. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's not till I started shoot, writing my own book on walking and studying it and studying Tai Chi and its relation to walking uh, and then starting to shoot videos that I found that there's lots of videos out there on YouTube and stuff where people are recognizing that they have walking problems and seeking out instruction for it. And once I found that, I realized that this is a really hidden market for people who realize there's a problem. There's people who, videos with millions of hits on how to walk right. And so that means there's a need for that out there that probably many physicians are not even recognizing. I think maybe podiatrists recognize it a little bit more. Sometimes physical therapists or chiropractors recommend it or recognize it a little bit more. Uh, regular MD physicians like myself are usually pretty oblivious to it. Okay. okay so so we're, getting some, uh, we're getting some people up on uh, Facebook. Uh, we've got uh, Rosa joining us. And uh, hey, Jeff is on. Uh, Jeff Martin, Todd's brother. Oh, hey, Jeff. <laughs> Great. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Jeff has a question. If somebody is pronating while they walk, is it hard to change the habit? 
That's a great question. That is. That, uh, yeah, that's a, that that's a great question. Yeah, uh, overpronation is probably one of the biggest problems, and that's what causes people to get flat feet. So the, the feet roll inwards. And so there's a variety of different things that can cause that. And depending on what the problem is, it has to be fixed in different ways. So I had this problem for many, many years of overpronation. I would wear out the insides of my shoes constantly. Uh, they would just wear out really quickly. And it wasn't until I realized I had a problem with my walking, not my arches, and then I fixed my walking problem that the pronation went away and now my shoes don't wear out. And so it can be fixed. People who walk with the duck foot walk that I've been pointing out like that, that itself, because your weight rolls inwards on your feet, causes your feet to hyperpronate uh, when you're walking. So getting your feet lined up correctly like they're supposed to be, your feet are supposed to roll that way, then it doesn't roll onto the arch and then it stops your arches from collapsing. So yeah, it can be corrected if you correct whatever the walking problem is. My walking problem wasn't with my feet turned out. I was leaning forward and kind of pushing myself through each step when I walk. And that in and of itself causes your uh, weight to collapse onto the insides of your feet. So there are a variety of different reasons for it, but it can be fixed. Wow. Okay, so, so I think this is the perfect time to ask. So people might be interested how do they start? I'm sure you've got some starter videos or advice or something for people to get more information. What yes, I do. So I have a lot of videos on YouTube and I think you're gonna put a link to one of them in the yep. comment section on here so people can go to it. Uh, Todd Martin, MD, YouTube, that's my YouTube channel. So I have tons of videos up there on walking as well as Tai Chi, other movement things. But all, most of my walking stuff is up there, so you can get that. Uh, I have a website, toddmartinmd.com. Uh, you can find links to my book and walking videos there. But I think YouTube is a great place to start, and we'll put a link in there uh, that you can get off of this Facebook live post. Okay. So we got some more questions. So we have lots of interests. Uh, we have uh, Jeff is also asking if building back your foot arches, is that attainable? Yes, I, I think your art. Well, some people have just genetically big arches or high arches. Some people have low arches. Uh, some people have medium arches. So I don't think that ha if you have a naturally small arch, the problem is not needing to get a big arch. It's trying to keep your arch naturally where your arch is supposed to be and not rolling the weight onto it. Right. So, my belief is, I, I, and I have this quote in my book, uh, the quote, uh, form follows function. That is from an architect, Louis Sullivan, who was a mentor of Frank, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, a famous architect. But that quote really kind of summarizes my feeling on walking. If your function is correct, the form will be correct. So the form follows the function. If you walk rolling your feet onto the inside of your arch, it's going to collapse to fit the function you're doing. If you function properly, the arch will form to be the way it's supposed to be just naturally based on the way you're moving. So I think when the form is off, meaning your arches are collapsed, I think that means that there's generally a function problem. So if you fix the function problem, the form will follow from that. That's great. And Rosa's joined in. And her question is, uh, she's asking you, Todd, do you think orth orthotics help the, cus uh, the custom made one for the individual? So I absolutely think orthotics help primarily because it is difficult for people to change at least right away what their walking style is. So if your weight is collapsing onto the inside of your arch, Propping that up with an arch support is helpful. It can uh, help keep your feet in a more proper position until you can actually change the function over time and then have your arch aligned naturally. So most people aren't going to walk out of my doctor's office and instantaneously change the way they walk. So in that case, I, I prescribe arch supports all the time. Now, But, I, but eventually... Custom? 
But well, I'm let sorry. Me just add, well, let me yeah, just add to Rose's specific question. Do you need the custom made art supports? So our podiatrists that we work with uh, don't really think that there's probably that much benefit for the custom made art supports versus the art supports that you can just get over the counter that are just sized to your shoe with a couple different variations of kind of small, medium, large. Um, those are relatively inexpensive. And that is probably where most people need to start. The custom made art support that you might get at a podiatrist office or some specialty shoe store, uh, those can be really expensive. And so are you getting that much more out of it um, than the cost justifies? For most people, I would probably say not. Um, I do have patients who said that custom made art supports really help them. So there's probably some people where they would benefit from. But I think most people can start with a generic over-the-counter art support. But ultimately, it's not the solution, not the long-term solution. It's a temporary crutch, if, if you could use that, you know, to kind of get going and to get your function going in the correct way. Is that what you're, you're saying with that? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's a very helpful for the short term, but what you really want to do is get yourself naturally aligned by moving correctly, because it's not just going to be the arches that are suffering. If you're putting your weight incorrectly on your arches, that means you're incorrectly putting your weight on your knees and your hips and your back also. So exactly. there's a lot of things that are going to be out of line. And that's why everybody has to go to the chiropractor to get themselves realigned all the time, because they're probably not functioning correctly. And so their body is not able to keep the correct alignment that it's meant to have. Can I, uh, Belle, do, is there, can I ask a question? Or is Sure, there... sure, go ahead. Okay, I hate to ask it, but can I go back to the flip box comment? We're yes. in California. I know. <laughs> uh, so tell us a little more about flip flops. And so I think what I heard was that there's something about most flip flops that most of us just buy off the shelf, whatever, that probably encourages improper form. Was that right? That's right. So I think, you know, flip flops were designed for you to go to the shower in, <laughs> in your house and not uh, go to the park or go walking uh, in your normal daily life. So the problem with flip flops, in my opinion, is not the lack of an arch support. A lot of people think there's no arch on the flip flops. They're too flat. That's the problem. The problem's not that. The problem is there's no strap on the back of the flip flop to keep your feet in the flip-flops. So if you walk normally with your feet facing forward in flip-flops, the flip-flops will fly off your feet. And so what people do is unconsciously start to correct for that to keep the flip-flops on their feet. And if you're walking to the bathroom, you can just point your toes down at the ground and kind of sprint them up into the flip-flops so they don't fly off. But yeah, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like grip them a little bit. Exactly, grip that's them. what people and, do, and and that's what you do for the short term, but then for yeah. the long term. But if you're going for a walk in your flip flops, or you're going to the beach, you're going, you know, going, you're living your life in your flip flops. You're not going to do that. And so what happens then is people start to turn their feet out and use their core in a different way that causes the feet to turn out. And when your feet are pointing out at an angle, then the flip flops don't fly off your feet when you're walking forward. And so. Oh. You know, when I go out and observe people now, if I watch people in flip-flops, you'll see big groups of them. Every one of them will have their feet turned out. And so it just is a compensation to keep the flip-flops from flying off your feet. And so that's why flip-flops are like my pet peeve now. <laughs> but so wear flip-flops outside the house. I know we're in California and everybody loves their flip-flops. But I'm just like, lose the flip-flops, please. If you're wanting something cool like that, you're saying a sandal, something that has a something on the back. Yes, a strap, it, 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 yeah, a strap, it a strap to, to the around back. the ankle. Yeah. Uh huh. Exactly. Okay. If you don't, it doesn't matter if there's no arch in it, a completely flat, flat shoe or, or sandal. As long as there's a strap to keep it from flying off your feet, that's fine. Okay, because it's we all just unconsciously do this so that because then when we move forward, it doesn't fly. It fly off. Ex doesn't exactly. fly off the front mm -hmm. of the of the foot. Wow. Okay. And so that's also, that also means that it's, it's not the same. Walking in flip-flops is not the same as walking barefoot. No, walking barefoot's great. 
Walking nope. barefoot, there's absolutely no problem with walking barefoot. Obviously, walking barefoot is very natural. <laughs> and uh, walking barefoot actually can help people learn how to walk better because I think uh, I would not say that shoes cause people to walk abnormally, but if you're walking abnormally, shoes make it less obvious. So for people who wow. lean forward like I used to do and kind of crash into my heels, if you're wearing a shoe, you don't really notice that. If you are barefoot, you're kind of going to notice if you're crashing into your heel on every step. And so wearing regular shoes can uh, allow people to walk incorrectly without recognizing it until it's too late. So walking barefoot is a really good thing to do uh, particularly indoors or in a safe environment, I'm not so keen on people walking outside on pavement and in the street with flip flops because there's all kinds. Or sorry, with uh, sorry, I didn't mean to go back to flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> That's his big pet peeve. <laughs> don't I, I wear don't, flip flops. Don't, yeah, I don't think it's a problem with uh, people walking indoors or in safe environments uh, barefoot. But I, I get a little bit uh, cautious about telling people to walk out in the street and pavement in bare feet because there's, you know, dangerous stuff out there. There's glass, there could be needles, who knows uh, what kind of things can be out there that you'll step on, get an infection, get a, a wound or sore on your feet. So Where you're like, no, we don't want your foot to be amputated. Yeah, exa <laughs> exactly. But walking barefoot is totally great and natural. Huh. Wow. Well, I have, I have learned a, a ton about this. This is really fascinating. Okay, so to to summarize, no more flip flops because you'll naturally turn your feet out, and then that probably a means big no. Yes. If you no, don't flip, if you, if... no flip flops outside the house. You can outside go to the sh you can go to the shower in your flip flops. And, I have flip flops, assuming... and I walk to the bathroom in them, and then I walk back to the bed, and I take them off. And I am as and I am assuming that you know if you're at the at the local pool and you're just going from the pool to the showers again. You can bring your flip flop. You know, you can w bring some flip flops to get in from the pool to the shower. That very short things like that, and then put on your sandals or your sneakers to to leave. Exactly, they're designed right. for you to go from the shower to the pool or from your bed to the bathroom. They're not designed for a five k. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I don't know, Lise. In our races, have we seen anybody? I think that's probably the only place we have not seen them. Yeah. No, I mean, I've seen plenty of people at, like, um, for those of you who don't know, we, as as a team, we often perform at, like, marathons and those kinds of races to, to cheer the racers on. And we're dancing at the, at the halfway point and then again at the end. Uh, so we observe a lot of runners. And, yeah, you see all kinds of stuff. I mean, depending on how squirrely people are feeling or if they're, you know, <laughs> Um, but no, I've never seen anybody in flip flops. But we have seen we have seen people try to come to our dance parties in flip flops and in high heels. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we have seen that, but yeah. not 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 at the races. So we uh, so we have to very kindly ask people to in case they have maybe some sneakers in the back of their car or something if they can change. And I don't know what makes them think they can come in and dance in flip-flops and high heels. Uh, I mean, I don't mean high heels like in a professional way where you're doing ballroom or something. They're wearing like the slip-in kind, the mules, you know, with the high heel. And uh -huh. yeah, and they have a heel, but it has no strap. So it's not only a flip-flop, but it's a flip-flop with, <laughs> with a heel. And that we have seen coming yeah. into the studio. So again. Well, I, I'll tell you, if you show up in a dance class in flip-flops, you're probably wearing them all the time. Yeah. That yeah. is absolutely true. Absolutely true. Okay, so so yeah, so we we know the deal with flip flops. Um, but you know, kind of circling back to to our beginning with the fact that you know we really promote doing things that bring people joy, cultivating joy, and then of course um, you know telling people that they're worth it, whatever it is that they're working on in their life. Um, that it's worth investing in themselves. It's worth doing things to better themselves. And part of that is keeping curious. So in coming back to that, I think the people who are watching this are curious, are obviously curious about this topic. 
they may, you know, be pleasantly surprised and say, oh my gosh, I, I have one of those kinds of pain, or I know that I'm a funny walker, as you say, and, and now I want to do something about it. Um, so we've got YouTube videos at Todd Martin MD is your uh, YouTube channel name. Yes. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. And then we've got toddmartinmd.com and where they can also get information and PDF. They can get the book. I have a walking code uh, course called the walking code online course, okay. which is a series of videos, about 70 different videos tackling every part of walking technique and how to correct very specific problems. So how to correct duck foot walking, how to correct leaning forward, how to correct overstriding, all the different varieties of problems you might have. Uh, the book addresses those and also the videos in the course address those. And the book is kind of uh, dovetails with the course. So it kind of follows along with it. So everything that's in the book is in the course. Everything that's in the course is in the book. So oh. like, uh, the, book, the book is like a reference, a reference book that they can quickly go to if they have, if they're not watching the video at the moment. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if, if I know, like, you know, I'm beyond curious and I just know that, oh yeah, I have that problem. I walked up with it and I want to correct it. The video, the course then is what I probably want. Yeah. You'd want the course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Because it, 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 it's, a, it's a, like it, I said, it's like a dance, learning how to do it. So that's quite, it's a little involved, but it's doable. It's totally doable. Uh, but the course goes from kind of top to bottom on how to start changing things from your core, because it's really all about how you move your core. And so you'll get that through the course. Question. For, the, for people who don't know what the core is, what are you talking about? Yeah, so the core is kind of where we center our movement from. And so that would include your uh, the waist in your the upper and lower abdominal muscles, the upper and lower back muscles. So uh, what you would generally call your waist is your abdominal core, and then your hip joints also uh, account for your core. So your hip flexors and your hip extensors, as well as your abdominal and back core are, are part of your core. Okay, thank you. And, I just yeah. don't know, you know, who knows how many people use the word core and not, so I thought I'd ask. Yeah, people use it differently. Some people think the core is just their abdominal muscles trying to get that six pack, but it's really what is guiding all of our movements. Everything we do, every, if we're trying to walk in a straight line, turn in a circle, we're using our core is directing everything we do. And so uh, what so my is stuff like is all about this. What's that? I'm sorry, that is like a dance. Yes, it is totally like a dance. And so what I teach with walking is totally applicable to dancing. So if you're trying to be a good dancer, uh, learning the same techniques for the walking apply directly to all types of dancing. So that's why I, I find it so fun to do both, to work on my dancing, work on my walking, and just always kind of think of what I'm, think about what I'm doing when I'm moving, because it, it, it actually makes it more fun. <laughs> I love and it. That's the, that's the curiosity part, staying yeah. curious, uh, staying aware, mindful, and part of being happy, like you said, Todd, is is being curious and enjoying that process. Yeah, yeah, totally. And hey, nothing to, I mean, nothing better than, you know, when we talk about mindfulness and, and keeping curious and that being the key to keeping the mind alive and, and the body alive for us, you know, and using it as for as long as we possibly can. Um, what a better thing to be working on than walking because we do it all day long so you're kind of if you're if you're consciously working on it or following your course for example then you know it's something i kind of get to like check in on i imagine like throughout the day every day mm -hmm. kind of gives you like a neat new project to work on yeah i think <laughs> yes. a lot of people have heard of like moving meditation and okay. like Tai Chi is a moving meditation, but just walking is a moving meditation if you take it to that mindful level where you're actually thinking about what you're doing. You can actually totally focus on your body while you're taking each step and it really clears your mind of any other thoughts. And so you can just go for a walk and you're meditating just by going for a walk. So it's just Oh, super I love that. Do that. I yeah. love that. I wanted to ask, so, if a person is taking your course, 
and they're following along with with the coursework if they like if they run up against the wall or a snag or get they get confused uh, is there some way they can reach out to get clarification or something to, something to that sort yeah mm -hmm. yeah so there's comments so people uh can post comments to me in the course if there's questions and i will respond back to them directly uh, oh. if they have uh, a real problem they will just post a video for me and i can oh. i can watch them walk on the video and i can respond directly to them oh wow so this is yeah. not just i mean just i mean all you know <laughs> There are, a lot of, there are a lot of courses out there, right? And a lot of books written and in any category that you're trying to, when you're trying to improve yourself or correct something, etc. But they run the gamut from, I just read this and, you know, I'm on my own to private consultation at, at this end, I'd say, right? So yeah. that, that is really great to hear because, yeah, like if you're thinking, okay, he says it's totally doable, I can fix this. I'm a, but oh, you know, oh, that's 70, 70 videos. It sounds like I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to run into problems. I'm not going to be able to do. Yeah, that. I could totally see where somebody gets stuck. Yeah. yeah. Even though the the I'm sure the videos are explained very clearly, everything is written clearly. But the person, the way a person pictures it, the way people learn, they learn in many different ways. So I can completely see somebody going, okay, and I do, and then their mind just goes off like. Okay, but what if I do that? So I think that's fantastic that that's they're a, able to comment and you can. So is that a different, uh, that's a different aspect of your program? Yeah, it's, well, it's part of the course. So if you if you enroll in the Walking Code online course, so we don't do, the, do that on YouTube, but through the online course, oh, okay. they can directly comment on that right to me. And then I can comment back and we do that all the time. And then sometimes if somebody's having a particular challenge with the way they're moving, uh, they will send me a video and then I will tell them exactly what I see in the video. And I've had great feedback from that. So people have emailed me back, like they finally got it and like their walking feels amazing now. And that really makes me happy when I hear that sort of thing. Oh, I that is so, that vets, I bet. Are you, are you, do you do any uh, conferences or thing uh, like um, right, right now during this time, are you planning on doing any video conferencing with people or things like that in the future for your for your uh, course? I definitely want to do that. I haven't done it yet. Uh, this would be the first kind of live thing I've done uh, through Facebook right now. Uh, but I do want to do a video, kind of uh, almost like a video tutorial. Like I might even do a YouTube live thing where I'm actually standing up um, in a room where people can watch me move and I can kind of teach and then respond to questions um, and answer through that. So I, I do want to do that is probably my next step. Well, well we can uh, definitely promote it here and yeah. remind people to go over to the, is it a sister? Is it a sister platform? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that other platform <laughs> that, <laughs> that I'll go over to YouTube and um, join the join your YouTube live. Yeah. That, I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. Typically, let me just ask in case people are wondering about that. If, if people are specifically interested in participating in something like that where you're on in live time and you're actually instructing or teaching and, and taking questions, those kinds of things about actual technique, um, is there, you know, is there somewhere they sign up for that or should they contact you to say, hey, you know, I specifically want to know about that. Do you have a sign up form, page, email list, anything like that? Uh, yeah, so through the uh, walk, through my uh, my website at toddmartinmd.com, people can get the free intro book, which will sign them up to my email list and they can email me through there. Uh, you can also just email me directly through uh, my personal email, Todd Martin, uh, Todd S. Martin at hotmail.com. Like, what's my email? <laughs> <laughs> I have so many email addresses. Oh, yeah, Toddsmartin.com. And then uh, through Facebook, uh, at Todd Martin MD on Facebook, people can Facebook message me. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, and what is the, what is the price for the course, in case people are wondering? Uh, the course is $49.99. And that is for, uh, you get all the videos, you can download the videos, 
uh, people can stay subscribed uh, for $9.99 a month after that if they want to stay subscribed. And most people do stay subscribed because uh, they tend to be on the course for quite a while working on it. Yeah, and want that being able to ask those questions. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, so the so the 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 nine ninety the the forty nine ninety nine is to get the course, and the nine ninety nine is for them to have the ability to contact you if they have a question. Yeah, if they want to stay enrolled and be able to shoot questions back and forth, send me a video, have me personally comment on that, uh, then that's a nine ninety nine a month. Uh, but just buying the course, you can download all the videos from the course once you buy it. So you could just buy the course for forty nine ninety nine, download it all, and just own it all. Uh, you don't have to stay subscribed. But I, I find about ninety percent of people do stay stay subscribed. Yeah, I mean that's that's very reasonable for being yeah. able to get that kind of feedback and and commentary and and help along the way. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so very so much if you, for joining us. Yes, I ahead. just have one last question. Uh, if there was one thing that one thought that you wanted to leave people that were curious about it or maybe apprehensive you know i think maybe some people might think oh my gosh 70 emails good grief i'm a little overwhelmed <laughs> i mean is there a thought that you can leave people with that maybe encourage them not to be scared and not apprehensive to go go forward Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I would just say that there is nothing to be afraid of. Walking is such a great thing for you to treat your body to. Walking is a gift, the ability to do it. And so you should treat yourself to that gift of walking. And if you're having challenges, then you want to kind of, um, you know, figure out what the problem is so you can keep uh, enjoying that gift for as long as possible. And then if you can walk correctly, people can be a hundred years old and be perfectly healthy and walking and upright. And that takes some doing. Some people do that naturally, but not everybody, not even most people. And so it That's is true. worth it. It is worth it for you to treat yourself to walking better and moving better because you will feel so much better about yourself. When you feel like you're flowing through life, it's just a game changer for your attitude. So it is just worth it to do that. And so I wouldn't be afraid. It's a, it's a gentle process and there's no rush in it. You'd work at your own speed. And if you have troubles, you can always ask me, but it is totally worth it for you as a person to treat yourself to the gift of healthy movement. Oh, and I have to say, you know, as a dancer, I, you know, I would always say, oh yeah, there's nothing like dancing, but quite frankly, if you know how to walk, then you are able to dance so much better because whatever functions, I, I, I feel that whatever functions are not going well in your walking that you do I think you walk more than you dance as much as as much as we dance, Lise, I still think we walk more. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I'm sure. I think, yeah, I think yeah. so. Even though we dance a lot, but I would say, yes, make that investment in yourself for walking because then if you are a dancer or you enjoy dancing, it just will make everything feel so much better. I, I would say that you're absolutely right about the gift to yourself about walking i absolutely 100 percent would i, I don't we mean to make all the dancers to. yeah I don't, I don't mean to like prolong this onto another thread of conversation but that's i guess that's kind of our <laughs> theme Mel and i just keep talking uh, <laughs> so, sorry you're you're caught in this um <laughs> but um do you find i just found myself thinking this as you were talking about you know the gift of you know that we're able to walk it and being able to give yourself that gift and yeah when i see like my grandmother lived to 101 and and even with hip replacements like like she was really healthy and upright like pretty much until the end and it it was amazing but i what i found myself thinking here was i feel like sometimes we you know as we get into 40s and 50s and maybe earlier for some people like we just kind of accept it as normal that we're supposed to be in pain like that there's, we're going to be in some amount of chronic pain. Like, 
oh, my back hurts all the time. You know, not a ton, but it, it hurts all the time. Or my feet hurt all the time. Or, or you know, my neck or whatever. But, I mean, when you stop and think about it, I think what you're saying is that's not normal. Like you that, Yeah, that's not, nor that's not normal. There's something wrong. Unless, now, if you fall down the stairs or get hit by a car and you're having pain, okay, I expect that. But if you didn't get injured and you're having pain, there's something wrong with the way you're functioning. And that needs to get looked at. We should, our bodies are structured really well. And so if you move the way you're supposed to oh, move, you, you should a... not have pain. Wow. Oh, you have uh, another person joining us, uh, Lisa. I, I hope I'm not messing up the name, Blanc Blanchard. That's, hi, Dr. Martin. Do you know Lisa? Oh, that, oh yeah, I know Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Yay. Lisa Bl Blanchard? Blanchard. Uh -huh. Yeah, she that works right? with me. Ah, hi, Lisa. <laughs> and then Rosa, Rosa was also saying that not, not only she's adding to this point, and I think I agree with her, not only is it a great gift for yourself, but it's a great gift for your friend to a friend or family member. Meaning if you take good care of yourself, you know what I mean? You also are giving a gift to your family members. Of, of less stress, less worry. But I think Rosa's also meaning they should buy a package. <laughs> yeah. I think she's being, she's yeah, saying, okay, hey, I think Rosa Christmas actually, present. wait a minute, I think, I think I just went way over the top with that one. And I think she actually meant that you should buy it for a family or friend. That's a good Christmas gift, Rosa. Good idea, good idea. So you'll have to have some gift, uh, some, uh, what is it, e-gift e cards. <laughs> So people can buy it for family and friends during the holiday. Sounds like a good plan. Yes. <laughs> well, Belle, anything else that you want to add before we sign off? I uh, don't. Just, uh, just checking to see if we have anybody else. No, I, I think, I think this was great. I really appreciate it that you came on because I think you're passionate. You're passionate, and your topic is so important. I think it's number one important. And I usually don't think too many things are more important than dance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did I just say, well, did I just is, say that out loud? <laughs> dance is very important, too. I consider them the same thing. Yes, dance, I, walking I, is just a different dance with not, without music. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so it's all in the same category. Yeah. But, yes, I do, I do think it's super important. I'm so glad you've done this beautiful work and really encourage people to check it out. Can you... Yeah. Uh, so what is your YouTube, again, your YouTube account? Uh, Todd Martin MD is my YouTube channel. And I think you're going to post a link uh, on this uh, Facebook yeah. Live. And uh, Todd Martin MD, uh, dot com is my website. Well, thank right. you. Thank you again. I learned so much. Um, so fascinating. And, yeah, I got to go get the course right now because... Uh, I'm still working on my walk. <laughs> I actually know two family members where I'm like, hey, that person does that funny walk and that person does that funny walk. So here you go. Oh my God. And so, yeah, many, watch people. People. And so many people with and the people with the flip flops. Yeah, oh. go out there. If you're when you're walking around, watch people in the flip flops. Now if it's you, I apologize, but watch your own feet. <laughs> uh, but if you're not doing that, watch everybody else in flip flops and you will notice it right away. And you'll go, Oh my goodness, they're all walking with their feet turned out. I'm sure now I will not be able to ever not see that. Exactly, yep. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Oh uh, well, well thank, thank you again, Dr. Martin. Yes, thank you. And with that, uh, we are signing off tonight. Except, oh, wait. Ex wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Martin. You have to listen to this because now it's all about the dancing. So, oh. we want to remind everybody <laughs> that tomorrow night's theme is going to be whatever your spirit color is. Yeah. One of our dancers came up with that. So, wear whatever color is your color. That's our color theme for tomorrow night. Friday night party, special time, 7.30 p.m. So please mark your calendars. It's going to be a super fun time. And I think that's what we needed to say, yep. right? That's what we needed to say. So yeah. wear, wear your favorite color. And if you're feeling really festive, make sure you wear enough of it so it's super obvious to us which your color is. 
And yes, seven thirty Pacific time, uh, special time. Normally, our time is seven p.m. on Friday nights Pacific, but it's seven thirty tomorrow. So, don't think we're not there for you if you log in at seven. It's just seven thirty. That's it. Yes, just check the calendar, check our website, check our Facebook. All right, guys. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Dr. Martin.